Hey. Oh. Hey, man. Hey. It's uh, it's episode 69 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. 69. 69. There's no, I mean, there's what joke, fo- yeah. what joke are you going to make? Yeah, there's a joke people make about that. And, yeah, yeah. But I'm at an age where nobody does that for me anymore, so it's more depressing. <laughs> It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Even when I was young, if you're young, you try the 69 once or twice, yep. and both of you conclude it's terrible. Right. And you both conclude... Yeah. Concentrate. Yeah, you both say, how about we just go with the old-fashioned we trade off? Yeah. You do a nice thing for me, I do a nice thing for you. Tried to be fancy, but yep. look, the basics are the basics for a reason. Yep. And it's like trying to watch TV and read a book at the same time. Yep. And who needs it? Yeah. And, and 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 in in this particular case, while you've got the book in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, also, my wife's four foot seven. <laughs> Logi- yeah. Logistically. Always a problem. I'm, you know, I'm six five, so uh, it never works out. Yeah, you go. Okay, you're gonna have to stop for a second while I get closer. <laughs> I have to. I have to hinge. I have to hinge my back. Yeah, and you're like, oh, that's sexy. I, I'll bet nobody wants to hear us get into the minutia. No, they probably don't. Of speaking hinging? of speaking of people who don't want to hear us. <laughs> oh. So yeah, we, we talked a lot of them because <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, there are a lot of listeners. Yeah, there's more than that do, which is great. That's how it should be. That's true for most shows, even really popular ones. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean most most people didn't watch Better Call Saul. It's true. They're that's, lost. It's that's true. a fact. Yeah. So we're in good company. Oh yeah. <laughs> if we're very, being very loose in how we define what makes one company. But. statistically we're basically the same as better call Saul. absolutely as far as percentage of people who don't yes absolutely yeah. um but so for some reason uh we pick up listeners and uh, we seem to pick them up regularly not with great not a great amount at any one time but it's just we pick them up sure. and and it's always nice it's just people will leave little comments and Somebody left a little comment that they really enjoyed the show. And I said, well, thank you. I'm glad you found something of value in it. And they said, well, of course I did. And I would, and to me, that's not an of course. (laughs) No. To me, that's a great kindness that you took the time to listen to us. And obviously the big sell was probably a shared love of Billy Joel. I think that that's probably it. That's probably what attracts any listener to this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, just a very casual conversation. So we got a new listener. <laughs> and to this listener's credit, I'm pretty sure it's a dude. It's very clear they watched the whole show. Oh. It's very clear from their YouTube comment that they watched the whole show. Okay. And they're a new listener. And welcome to the show. I'm still glad you're listening, is what I'll preface this by saying. <laughs> And they said, uh, here's what I think of the show in a nutshell. The guy on the left, and now I looked at the video just to be sure, but I pretty much knew who he was talking about. The guy on the left was you. Uh, Very sexy. Very sexy. Described you as very sexy. Uh, Very funny. Very nice. Charming. Very nice. The guy on the right, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I want to make my own show that's 200 hours. I'm paraphrasing because I deleted it. Yeah, yeah. But I want to make my own show that's like 200 hours long and force him to listen to it so he knows what it's like listening to him talk. Wow. And uh, and, uh, now... Clearly, no part of this is mandatory. No, clearly he's somewhat of a lunatic because he described you as this masculine male, which you are. I'm not saying you're not. 
And but yeah, then, then again, me, statistically, yes. And then me is this beta male. So he believes in that. Okay. Which, by the way, is based on a debunked theory about wolves, you dummy. Right. Debunked by the researcher who originally published the research. When that's who's debunking, it's debunked. It's a good debunk. It's a hot debunk. Yeah. It can't yeah. be rebunked. But he's like, did you ever see the video of Shaq explaining how to save money on gasoline? <laughs> I don't think I did. God, I recommend it. And I'm going to post to it. It's the funniest thing because nobody could get through to him. So he's on Inside the NBA. Do you ever watch Inside the NBA? Oh, yeah. I love it. Lord, that's an entertaining show. Might be the best show on TV. It just might be. And then at one point, Kenny's talking about how he was buying a new, and this was like in 2018, and the conversation still comes up. <laughs> he was talking about how he was buying a new Range Rover, and it cost $80 to fill the tank. Uh-huh. And he's like, I don't think I want to do that. It's just too much to fill the tank. And then Chad goes, well, here's what you do. You wait till it gets to halfway, and then you put 20 bucks in. And it fills it to full, which no, it doesn't. <laughs> and then you, and every time it gets to half, your problem is you're letting it go to empty. And Shaq seems to be arguing that it uses more gas when you allow the tank to get empty. Wow. What? Yeah. Yeah. So according to Shaq, which by the way, couldn't be possible because if anything, you'll use a little less gas because of weight not a meaningful <laughs> amount negligible yeah yeah but from a purely like let's take this theory serious Shaq basically is under the impression that if you if the tank gets to halfway put 20 bucks in a and it'll never cost you 80 bucks because you're always putting 20 bucks and then Kenny was like so I'm supposed to stop every what where do you think I'm driving? What if I'm anyway? It was very funny. I feel like this is that guy regarding the wolf thing. I don't think you'd ever be able to explain to him, look. Oh yeah. You're not an alpha male, you're just a male. You might right. be somewhat aggressive, you might be somewhat non-aggressive, but also some non-aggressive folks are leaders. So sure. those are your alphas, and some aggressive people are just prisoners. Yeah. Uh, I you could argue the percentages. I would bet a lot of aggressive people tend to be followers. Yeah, and true. And Markle, Angela Markle, the German Chancellor, yeah. I would not describe her as an alpha male. No, but Lord, is she? Reason. Yeah, but she's a great leader. So it would seem. Yeah. Yeah, she she's uh, one of those that you go. Oh, I guess some of that stuff Germany used to be bad for they've handled. So oh, that's good. I think the mistake we made as a society is we taught a bunch of dumb people a cool word like alpha. Yeah. It is a cool ass word. It really is. And they need to put it somewhere and they're like, well, I'll describe myself with it. Yeah. Even though it's been debunked by the yeah. original fucker. Yeah. I'm an Omega male. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's great. It's yeah. uh, the free radical. Yep, I'm a free I am a free radical. That is probably Omega true. Three. Hey, Omega isn't there a band named the Free Radicals? Probably. Yeah. I would bet someone's sneaking up here. It's my spouse. Hi, Sue. Hi. Uh so I'm glad he's listening because I'm glad anyone's listening. Sure. Do you think and, he's still listening? Um Probably because here's what I've discovered. My charm. Yeah, yeah. Putting up with you. Yeah. <laughs> to get to my charm. That's right. And your sexiness. And my sexiness. Your yeah. sexiness. He mentioned your oh. sexiness. Well, he didn't see me today. Oh, no. His loss. <laughs> I'm doing a real sea captain thing today. <laughs> yeah, which is very Billy Joel, by the way. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. This yeah. is a Portuguese fisherman sweater. Yeah. 
It is very Billy Joel to try to look like a sea captain. <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, you know, you should wear your fisherman's jacket over your motorcycle jacket. <laughs> yes. You know, and over your... And not go near either mode of transportation. Yeah, over your businessman skinny tie for those songs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then be driven by a chauffeur. Yeah. Yeah, it was truly jarring. Um, I've said this before. Jarring. Yeah. But I was quite glad, but I'm like, I don't know that I have anything to say to this person. Not negative either. I don't have any negative feelings about them. I have a few about myself, so good job. <laughs> Did it hit some of the sensitive spots? Did you think, uh, oh, some of this is right? Or was that your fear that maybe some of it was true? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, and I know some of it is. I guess it doesn't ever hurt if it feels completely untrue. You're just yeah. like, well, silly. Oh, well, I... no, those are the things I think about myself. Oh, no. <laughs> when I go to a party now, and I don't go very often... Sure. Uh, I'm not invited very often, and also I don't go even when I'm invited. Um, and, and to be fair, friends of mine don't have parties, except for like this one dude who's really sweet, and I go to his because he's a nice man. Um, this is see, this is the problem. I talk too much. See, none of those details were necessary. <laughs> none, of, none of any of this is necessary. <laughs> well, that's true. So that's true of life in general, right? Homo sapiens weren't necessary. Yeah, no, it's all optional. They were not necessary. I'm, I'm, oh my goodness. Okay, I actually feel better now that I think of it that way. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess, a little bit Buddhist, right? Yeah, and a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> see, see, I'm charming and funny too. He did it. He did it, you guys. Now, I'll grant you that wasn't sexy, but. Well, it was funny, and uh, people love humor. That can be sexy. Um, hearing. But so when I go to parties, I'll practice listening because yeah. I want to be better at that. I want to be better at it, so I try. I'll be at a party and I'll go. Oh, I have something dumb to say, and I'll go. Let me try just not doing that today. <laughs> I'm Sue is very good about. Uh, teaching me to ask questions at parties and in social situations. I have a bad habit of not asking questions because I was raised by narcissists. And what they teach you is, oh, just talk about yourself until you get bored and then leave. <laughs> Don't ask about anybody's life. But Sue will interview people at parties and they love it. People love it. They want to talk about themselves. Did ask Sue this question. Did she read a book about that or is that just how she is? That is how she was raised. Okay. And uh, and she was a journalism student. So I think she learned a lot about how people react to being questioned. Um, and that, yeah, I mean, most journalists will tell you people love to talk about themselves. So if you ask them questions, they're uh, happy to see you. And when you leave, they'll be like, oh, that was a nice person. Oh, Yeah. And I guess probably you ask fun questions in the beginning and get them going when you're a journalist and then you get a little meatier. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then they still like you. My friend Walker, very smart man, super sexy. <laughs> um, <laughs> he uh, read this book because uh, a friend of his recommended about, and it, and it's, it doesn't sound like a very heavy read, but it was like one of those, hey, you want people to like you at a party. Here's what you do. And a friend of his who recommended the book, they went to a party and goes, watch what happens tonight. I will not talk about myself once. Mm. And he went in hardcore with this book's advice and he did mirroring because he talked about mirroring. Uh -huh. And he did the thing Sue does, ask questions. And afterwards, all anybody could talk about literally was how great this guy was. Hmm. And it was true. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that, but I'll listen and I'll ask questions. But I'm not going to ask questions about stuff I'm not interested in. Yeah, and I'm going to tell. I'm going to talk about myself if I have a good story. Yeah, I'm at the very least. This is what I've decided. I'm at the very least going to mention how good my hair looks. <laughs> that is one thing I will have noticed about you. 
I think it's, see, this is me intentionally being jarring. Because I find it is jarring to people when you say stuff like, well, at least I'm very good looking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But also, and this is self I know this is self-deprecating, but I believe it. I believe I have the kind of looks where I can go, yeah, but I'm real good looking. And people like (laughs) Jim likes to joke around. (laughs) So I don't think anybody thinks this guy's vain because they have eyes. (laughs) My face is serviceable. What if you lead with that? What happens? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you one thing that I like about myself. It's it, my face is reasonable. <laughs> yeah, You know what? I'm going to do that the next party I'm invited to. Yeah. So it might not be for a while. I would love to let me know if somebody fights you on it. <laughs> no, no. no you're, you're, hey, your face is outside the mean. <laughs> Uh, you're an outlier. <laughs> you're a facial outlier. They'll they'll shout. <laughs> I didn't expect that to catch fire. Oh wow! And then, if, of course, if it starts a fight, what does that mean? I'll do it every time. Then. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are a troublemaker, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, and it, I try not to be. And then, the instinct—it's always there. You're uh, impish. Oh, I think that I I like that, although I despise that Shakespeare play, but that's fine. <laughs> Midsummer Night's Dream. I always, I hate Puck. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? But he, probably because I'm too much like him. You know, when you meet somebody and they're too much like you, you don't like him. Oh, yeah. yeah that's why like, uh, mom and sister don't like each other. Yeah, that's why I've never liked woodland fairies because I'm like, I'm so much impish like they are. Yeah, I could imp better than you. Yeah. You, yeah, they don't like me either because I'm also not actually a woodland fairy and they feel like I'm like, you know, posing. That's why I have so much trouble with uh, sea captains. <laughs> <laughs> remember that party? I don't know if you remember this because this was probably in college where we went to that party. You were dressed like a sea captain and it might have been Paul, but Paul had invited Captain Crunch. Do you remember Captain Crunch came to that party? Yes. Dude, you guys got into it. Oh, yeah. He fucking tore up the roof of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, you filed assault charges. I remember you filed assault <laughs> charges. Yeah. They didn't go anywhere. Yeah. No, well, of course. He's a they were like, look, it's a military matter because he's a captain. Yep. <laughs> yep. And it was referendums dropped. Yeah. The Navy buried it. No justice. There's no justice there. Yeah. I still, yeah, I, I should have stood up for you too. So I apologize. You know, it was my fight to lose. <laughs> <laughs> See, how do you like me talking now, huh? Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, uh, God, for real, that guy's a dick, but I, I'm glad he's listening. But boy, he's a dick. Boy. <laughs> I'm like, you're glad he's li- And it's fine. I'm a dick too. So I guess that's fine. But Boy, he don't he don't like me. Uh, well, that's fine. He's a dick, and you're a dick. Yep, that's true. We are cut from similar unpleasant cloth. <laughs> so I picked the Great Wall of China. You did, and the only reason I picked it is because we were talking about the album cover, and yep. I thought, well, I'll pick something from this album. And uh, my God, is this song overproduced? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. There's so much going on, and I'm not. So it's t- Beatles. It's orchest- orchestral as hell. There's all this stuff going on. It's very. It's a lot. There's a lot happening. And then it's then. I rock- don't know how much any of it helps. Yeah, it it feels like a bad soup. It's just got so much going on. Yeah. I didn't dislike it. I won't it not that. It's just Lord, like, like a lot of falsetto from Billy in this one. Yeah, never great. Yeah. Probably one of the best times he's pulled it off, but that is not saying a lot. And Are it's a like lot me, of it. Um when I 
in the olden days would pick up a new Billy Joel album and listen to it. And there was a lot of falsetto in a song. One of my thoughts would be like, well, he's not going to do that in concert. <laughs> uh, concert. That lady will have to do it. Yeah. And that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like uh, when he does Innocent Man in concert now, he'll do most of the song, but then when the the high notes happen, the, the lady will sing them. <laughs> Crystal Tiafero. Yeah. And then it's probably, it's prettier anyway when she does it. So great. Yeah. I was like, oh, then this should have been the, the way you recorded it. Yeah. I d it's such a Billy Joel thing because, you know, Innocent Man is a great example. You do all this 50s stuff where you're doing harmonies that are reminiscent of harmonies from old 50s songs but you're doing all the parts which is not how it was done right which they makes people because if you have a very low voice you can't do a high part yeah and, and it just versa. it just sounds off right also doesn't sound authentic yeah it sounds a little bit like ai like yeah by an ai yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's all the things that it was. They used guitar feedback, like that particular trick, but yep. not right because it didn't sound dirty. They made it, they used the feedback of a guitar as an effect in the song, but clean. Oh, That's weird. weird. You don't do that. The, so I think the Beatles were literally the first to do that. Um, to, use uh, feedback? to use feedback and make that a big prominent part of the song not that there wasn't feedback before but where they intentionally because uh, right. it's at the beginning of that song I can't remember the name but it goes anyway yeah yeah so that was a yeah. I feel yeah. fine the name, name of the song is I feel fine um, right. But that was, at the time, it was groundbreaking. And it isn't surprising that Billy Joel would do it. He likes the Beatles. But right. it's he, groundbreaking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it feels, too, like he doesn't like, he's a perfectionist. So it almost feels like he was like, let's use that guitar feedback thing. And then he was like, ooh, can we clean that up? <laughs> yeah, well, we can. But then it's not the thing you're trying to do. Right. So then you're not doing either thing. Yeah. And so it's orchestral, it's rock, it's falsetto, it's very produced, a lot of echo, and then a long last note. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another good Beatles trick. Yeah. I mean, it's the perennial Beatles. It's the one. The one. That, you know, you know, other than like, you know, hurting each other's feelings about your wives, they also did that trick. Yeah, popularized by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were great at that. Oh, R.I.P. Christy McPhee, by the way. What a great talent. Indeed. She was, now I'm not even just making this, she was my favorite member of the band. I I often, I liked Stevie Nicks, but I often found just the just sweetness of Christy McPhee so nice and enjoyable. Yeah. And then she would bury a really hardcore, brutal lyric or sexy lyric underneath her sweetness and it would sneak by you and later on you'd go, oh, hell. Oh, hell, Christy. Oh, hell, Christy. Yeah, that's what you do because <laughs> we're both alpha hillbillies. <laughs> oh, hell, Christy. Y'all shouldn't be talking like that. <laughs> and by the way, I come by that honestly. I'm actually, so so don't write another mean email. An accent yeah. comes from my people. Uh, you, are, you are hill folk. I am hill <laughs> <laughs> so the one la long last note i don't hate the song at all don't love the song no i don't go looking for it no it's uh it's by the way it's not the first thing that comes up if you google a uh, great wall of china what does the the, <laughs> the, the wall <laughs> a, lot, a lot of pictures <laughs> i literally googled it so I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the lyrics, get ready for the old podcast. And I was like, oh, what's this? I was so sleepy and dumb that uh, <laughs> pictures of the wall popped up. And I was like, what the fuck is this? 
how weird would the world be if Billy Joel's song was the first thing that came up on Google? I mean, you would think that Google, the algorithm would learn that I'm not looking for, whenever I search anything, it's probably Billy Joel lyrics I'm trying to find. Yeah, it should default to Billy Joel lyrics. That's true. Right now. Yeah. Episode oh. 69. Yep. A dirty don't type that into your browser. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, don't type 69 in the Great Well of China. Oh, I wonder. That might actually be cool pictures if somebody did a 69 on the Great Well of China. Good good for them. That's living dangerously. Yeah. Oh, He's my God. Patrolled, heavily patrolled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh Lord. Yeah. So uh in my on my Alexa, if I listen to any song, it it, it my particular sound system is geared up to where I can pick a song and it'll generate a playlist based on that song. Nice. So I can so I, I can pick um everywhere by Fleetwood Mac, and then it'll pick songs that are in that genre, and I can pick something by anybody and do that. My Alexa at this point, no matter what I pick, I could pick Bach. And eventually, Alexa will go, yeah, but you probably want some Billy Joel. And some Billy Joel will just play. Right. And she's not wrong, but it irritates everybody else in the house who uses that system. <laughs> Fantastic. Because I'm like, Mary Jo, I'll play some Sondheim. She plays some Sondheim. And then, you know, the next thing you know, it's Billy Joel. And it's like, well, Mary Jo, it fits. Kind of because of things I've said on my podcast, which I guess means Alexa's listening to my podcast. <laughs> That's another one. Yep. I that counts as a listener. I don't want to hear her opinions. They're probably also pretty mean. Yeah. She's very curt. Yeah. The very I'm, sure. least. I'm uh the person on the left, tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> Has a reasonable face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the person on the right is also there uh well listen i think i started last time so this one has a hell of a lot of lyrics i'm gonna warn you now if you're already worried that it's been a while since we've started <laughs> this I, one's got say, a I don't like the lyric shape yo it's very blocky it's a real blocky. It's it might as well be a novel. Yes. These but, lyrics could have been written by your mother in a text. Oh man. That's another thing I gotta do tonight. Uh, I wish I had, you know, I should have a podcast with her. I would watch that. Right? Yes, I would listen to that. Look, I'll pitch it when I go home for Christmas, but there's gonna be a lot of explaining <laughs> about what a podcast is. And what a computer is. Dude, your first episode should be just you trying to explain what a podcast is. <laughs> that might just be the whole podcast. Ah, I am I will listen. You got one listener already. All right. And I will compliment your looks and complain about hers in the oh, comments. Well, this is a very, that's a very good incentive. <laughs> so the person on the left, reasonable. The person on the right. Crazy? <laughs> Chris, super old and crazy. Oh. All right, I'm going to start the lyrics. Why not? Yeah, let's do that. Buckle up. Advice is cheap. You can take it from me. Oh, boy. Already talking about advice. Yeah. And whether you can take it from... Oh. He loves I... to give advice, and now he's just uh, expounding on advice. Yeah. Advice is cheap. You can take it from me. It's yours to keep because opinions are free. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows about the trouble I've seen. Mm -mm. Nobody's perfect, mister. Nobody's clean. So here's one thing I like. Advice is cheap. You can take it from me. That's advice about advice. Oh. I kind of like that. Advice is cheap. You can take it from me. That's good advice. I like good, that. Good advice, advice. And I also like is I think he's doing this on perfect on purpose. Nobody's perfect, Mister. Nobody's clean. 
I think he's making a weird Mr. Clean reference. <laughs> I think so, right? Could be one of those accidental ones. It could be, but this is Billy Joel. I could, but yeah, it's I yours to. There's no other reason to call somebody Mr. Yeah. Unless you're a mom and your kid just drew on the wall. Yep. Or you're uh, an awkward college girl flirting. Hey, mister. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by <laughs> the way, if you're an awkward college girl flirting with me, I'm too old. But when I was that age, that would work. The mister, yeah. But also everything would work. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Important>. yours. <laughs> Such an important side note. Yeah. Nobody knows about the trouble I've seen. I I don't care for that. No, that's uh, just cribbed. Yeah. That's appropriation at its finest. It's and yours. That's... Yeah. Although, to be honest, nobody knows about the trouble I've seen. Feels like appropriation, but the original lyric was written by a Jew anyway, so. Okay. Back I'm not... It's like the Banana Boat song, which you think, oh, that feels like an old-timey... Nope. Written by a Jewish man. Great. Like, yeah. and also a lot of good uh, Christmas songs. Yeah, indeed. Written by a Jewish man. Yep. They do it all. Yeah, they do it all, and nobody likes them. We, <laughs> except us, and we should well, make a point that this podcast is uh, pro-Semitic. Uh, well, as a Jewish boy, I will tell you, yes, we are pro-Semitic. <laughs> Very important. It's yours to keep because opinions are free. That's okay. That's okay. So far, just talking about advice and hasn't given any. Yeah. Except for <laughs> the fact that advice is cheap. Yeah. Except for the advice advice. Yeah. Did I continue? Yes, sir. It costs too much? Mine says costs too much. <laughs> Mine does too. I but I'm like pretty sure it's costs. Yeah. It costs too much and takes too long to find out too late. Some words aren't heard till after they're spoken. For sure that's all words. Yeah. Your, ro your role was protective your soul was too defective. Some people just don't have a heart to be broken. That I like. Yeah, I do too. And he's mad at someone. <laughs> he's mad at somebody again. And he's going to tell him how it is. Yeah. Which at this point in his career, I'm like, okay, you're now kind of an old man who's been around the world and you've seen a lot of things. And uh, I... Uh, Cold Spring Harbor advice, you can keep it. <laughs> 24. Yeah. This guy, I'm like, all right, look, if you learn something on the road, I'll listen. Yeah. But this is all about advice and how it's cheap and it costs too much. Yeah. <laughs> Takes too long to find out too late. Some words aren't, you're not listening to me. Yeah. But I do like the sentiment that some people just don't have a heart to be broken yeah does it occur to you that your soul was protective your 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 role was protective your soul was was too defective is a brutal cut right yeah. like whoever you're saying this to this does not sound to me like words intended to make amends no. this sounds like a telling someone off yeah burning it down it feels like a burning it down like this i don't care if we make amends i got stuff i want to say to you and whether or not it's fair or not don't care i'm mad that's what it sounds like yeah there's no coming back from this yeah nobody's perfect mister i'm trying to figure out who we're talking to yeah it's a dude maybe i think nobody's perfect I, I honest honest to god i think he thought of the mr clean thing i think that's all that is <laughs> i just think <laughs> he's like oh like the commercial of that bald guy yeah i'll do that i think that i think that's a, an unintentional john lennon 
I think he John Lennon talked about how when some of his songs were written after he saw some commercial for soap or something. <laughs> And, and he would like crib the melody. He no, it was the I sometimes like instant karma, for example, which is a nice little tune. He right. was watching a commercial and it was about instant coffee, and he was thinking about stuff that's instant. And it instant karma occurred to him as just being a really good phrase to start with. Yeah, wrong. He's not. Yeah, now yeah. I'm, and I'm like, oh, I like Mister Clean. He's a fun character. Here you go. This, I feel like, could still be, he might be singing to a dude who fucked him over in some way. Yeah. Um, plenty of. A manager, in which manager case there needs to be, in which case he doesn't need to rebuild that relationship because then, fuck you guys, you robbed yeah. him blind. Yeah, no, you have to protect yourself. Also, uh, he had a big breakup with his drummer. Yeah. That I don't know the details of. Yeah. Uh, yep. Also stole his first wife from his bandmate. Wow. So real messy. Yeah. I still think uh, possibly a dude. Okay. Uh, you're you're probably right. Um, let's find out. Let me read this part. Um, we could have gone all the way to the Great Wall of China if you'd only had a little more faith in me. Now, contextualizing that and maybe it being about a drummer um or a bandmate or a manager or some or another dude i'm like oh okay so it could be about that journey from um beginning of being a small little band with a lead singer to honestly traveling all around the world it actually makes in lieu of diamonds gold and platinum reminders will still shine bright in lieu of diamonds, gold and platinum reminders will still shine bright. Gold and platinum. Ah. It, going on the premise that he's talking to a dude and then thinking about that drummer who may or may not have anything to do with it. But if he does, gold and platinum, I platinum records, right? Yeah. Pretty, that'd be a that's pretty good writing right there, actually. Yeah, we don't mind that. All the king's men and all the king's horses. I don't like that. <laughs> no. Can't put you together the way you used to be. We could have been standing on the Great Wall of China. Now, I want to tell you one thing I like right away because I didn't expect it. It's called the Great Wall of China. It's not remotely about the Great Wall of China. No. I like uh, that. Yeah, that's always nice. Um. It also, um, the Great Wall of China isn't a metaphor in the song. It's like, it's fairly literal. Yeah, it's like we could have gone to this great wonder. We could have been so beautifully successful. If it's about a lady, we could have been so. But I think you're right. I think you, yeah. You're right. It's not a metaphor. He is literally saying, hey, we could have taken a nice trip. Yeah. God, I like that. Played all around the world. Yeah. Dude, so I'm liking the song better already, although it is overproduced. Overproduced. Yeah. You know, maybe. Um, if this person hadn't quit on him, maybe it wouldn't be overproduced. True. <laughs> maybe he's yelling at his bare bones producer. Where he's like, I wouldn't have had to use these electronic drums. But I didn't know any better because you're not here helping me. Yeah. We're not going uh, past Duluth with this uh, production quality. <laughs> <laughs> they, have a, they have a terrible wall. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, terrible the wall of Duluth. The what? The terrible wall of Duluth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you've know, seen, the, you've seen the signs, the billboards for it. That's right. You know, it's one of the only man made articles. You can't see from anywhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ah. <laughs> see, that was a good joke, Dick. All right. Yeah. We should switch sides. <laughs> uh, uh, I think he's going to be happy how much he got in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably, yes. Yeah. I would be too, though. So good, good on you. He's going to come after me. 
Never. Yeah, You're too sexy. Like, oh, he's not as sexy as I thought he was. <laughs> what are those fucking plants all about? Oh, you know, yeah. Like, what are yeah. all those beta plants about? <laughs> <laughs> Just begging for water. Like uh, Maybe plant. I want to see the next email. Here's what I say. The plant on the right, very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Lose the other plant. Ugh, I should I'm make him... Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, never mind. Ugh. All right, I'm going in. All right. You take a piece of whatever you touch. Too many pieces means you're touching too much. You never win. <laughs> what are you? Sue is laughing at the lyrics. I kind of like it, but it I is. Like it. it rhymes a lot. Um, you You never win if you can't play it straight. You only beat me if you get me to hate. It's good advice. Yeah, it's pretty good advice. Yeah. Although, I think you're allowed to hate this guy. Yeah, I do too. Taking all your pieces. I also disagree with that thing anyway, that people will always say, you know, you know, hating, hating someone is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die or however it goes. Right. I actually think sometimes it's very healthy to dislike somebody. It's appropriate. Yeah. Obviously, don't let it eat you up, but I don't think it's always true that, you know, you got to forgive. I'm like, no, sometimes you got to not forgive, but let yeah. go, but let go. But let go. Yes, it is. You have to keep measuring what's important to you. Yeah. And if you just love everybody, no matter what they do to you, most people won't treat you very well. Yeah, di divergent. Um, um, Gandhi was was in an interview. He was talking about you know his method of you know passive resistance, and somebody asked him if it would have worked in World War II against right. the Nazis, and he said that it would. But blah blah blah. I know Gandhi's a better man than I am. But in this case, he's wrong. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. We nope. just got steamrolled by the Germans. It's absurd. So not all solutions work in all situations. Oh, people hate to hear that. Yeah, that bumper sticker, war is never the answer. I, uh, I appreciate the sentiment, but the real bumper sticker should be war is sometimes not the answer. Yeah. Because sometimes it is, unfortunately, because we're all dumb primates. Yeah. And it certainly is the answer if uh, someone brings war to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very appropriate response. Yeah. Preferring peace is great, but peace at any cost is maybe not the no. wisest strategy. And you don't, it doesn't work either. You don't get peace. Yeah. If someone's murdering you. Yeah. It's hard to stay peaceful. What is it, Thomas Jefferson, the man who's willing to trade away a little bit of freedom? Or a little bit of security is bound to lose both. Yep. Yeah. You burn. <laughs> you burn. Oh my god. Um, so ask Sue, does she hate the lyric too many pieces? Wait, uh too many, too many pieces. pieces means you're touching too much. Sue, do you hate that? Wow. It's the worst thing she's heard by a professional writer. <laughs> that's fantastic i'll have to show her a couple of manuscripts <laughs> yeah i will yeah i'll send her some of my poetry too. too many pieces means you're touching too much now she's laughing again <laughs> well as long as she's happy well here's what i do like about it is <laughs> yeah. i i like that he's lashing out he's just lashing out it's, yes he is just scolding this person a lot and I don't think he's writing a character who's lashing out. I think, honest to goodness, we're getting a little oh. bit of what Billy Joel's pissed off about in this moment. You can tell, I think, largely by how many damn words there are. Yeah! <laughs> the, the sheer volume. You can tell the level of rage. Yes. And that, as a fan, you kind of enjoy that. Like, there's a couple songs, Lennon and McCartney both wrote mean songs to each other. Neither of the songs are good. 
but as a fan, they're kind of fun to listen to. Yeah, the best. Wow. How do you it. sleep is one of them, by the way, John Lennon wrote. Oof. How do you sleep? Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was rough. Yeah. Uh, all right. It must be so lonely to think that you have only somebody else's life to live if they let you that's very much somebody who works for him yeah i ain't too selective but it don't take no detective to find out how fast your friends will forget you there's a lot of clumsy rhymes in here yeah, that makes me think that it's pretty ragey too. Yeah. Is it too worried about the language of it? Lonely only uh somebody else's life to live. Listen, I'm going to stick with my unsubstantiated opinion. The other thing was about the commercial for Mr. Yeah. Clean. This he wrote because he was watching One Life to Live. <laughs> uh, selective and detective. Oh, yes. That's a hurry to get this out. It's funny how much I don't hate it because yeah. I just think it's neat that it just, man, overproduced, underwritten. It just feels like he went onto the page because he was mad. And it doesn't seem like much editing happened after the original, what we call a vomit draft. Yeah. Uh, look at the shape of the lyrics. There's no way any editing was done. It just wasn't. No, it's all there. You don't shape something into that. That's like, you know how they say, uh, a sculptor will say, well, the statue was already there. I just right. removed the other parts. That's as if the sculptor went, well, it's already there. So I'm just going to leave the other parts. Yeah. Just here's a block of marble. Just, just know that it's a dude with a pretty sweet penis. <laughs> For me to you. <laughs> uh, I don't mind the way we're doing it because this is different than the other chorus. So I'll read this and then you'll close it out. All right. We could have gone all the way to the Great Wall of China. Now all you're going to be is history. Wow. I'm mad. So Help mad. your... <laughs> oh, my God. Help yourself. It's all you can eat at the Empire Diner tonight. You're right. It's about a band member or it's about a manager or it's about, or about both. I got to say it's about a band member because it's not about a manager because the manager, if he's great, just has money. He's not on stage. So I think you're right. It's a better. Oh, I can't wait to read this next lyric. And also, it's never all you can eat at a diner. Yeah. They sometimes they'll have that pancake thing, but they know you can't eat that much. Yeah, that's why they do pancakes. Yeah, they're like all you can eat pan pancakes. All you can eat pancakes, by the way, you could change the title of that to four pancakes. I can't get there. Not anymore, huh? Could you in the old days? Maybe. There yeah. may maybe in the stoner days. Now there's oh I have too many belly issues. Yeah. Plus, you're not pancakes. All I can eat pancakes is zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a different meal. Oh man, if you were doing all, all oatmeal, if you were doing stand up. That's the good premise for uh, a bit. That really is because it's such a good observation. All you can eat pancakes for me is zero. That's how many I can eat. That's all I can eat. That's good. Uh, sucks that it cost me four ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, there is an empire diner in uh chelsea yeah i don't know if that's the one he means but if yeah. he does chelsea was a pretty shitty neighborhood when this song came out yeah really go to the shitty neighborhood it's all you can eat at the shitty diner yeah and you could have had that <laughs> he's he's undermining the value. Uh, this next line, you could have had class. You could have been a contender. Could have been a contender. Listen, for sure it was Mr. Clean. 
for sure now it's just a famous boxing movie. That's all. Uh, on the waterfront? Yeah. Charlie, you should have looked out for me. Is Charlie, wait, is Charlie the name of the drummer? Don't ask him. Oh, Charlie is the guy in on the waterfront. He's still doing oh. dialogue from that movie. Okay. Charlie, you should have looked out for me. You could have been standing, standing on the Great Wall of China. Some of the singing in the song is good, by the way. Some of the singing is very good. It's just that's a lot of falsetto. By the way, Charlie yeah. on the waterfront, I think Charlie was the boxer's manager. Okay. Let him get hurt in some way or ripped off in some way. Well, Lordy, that narrows it down, doesn't it? Now, maybe that is good, as far as at least letting us know what he's talking about. Yeah. Wow. Look that up. That's that's pretty damned interesting. And it makes it more likely. Your original contention, I think you were on, you were on the money. It's about a dude. Yeah. And and also, by the way, that makes it easier for me to swallow the vitriol. So it isn't him mad at a girlfriend because I think he's always known that's mostly been my fault. <laughs> so that's or at the very least, we're a team and not being able to work it out. Whereas a, a shady manager, that's all shady manager. I don't care if he made poor decisions that somebody making poor decisions doesn't give you license to be a crook. Wow, Charlie, you could have looked out for me. Should have looked out for me. You could have have been standing, standing on the Great Wall of China. Which is there was more money to make. You'd have looked out for me. There was you would have been fine. You didn't have to. You didn't have to jerk me around. Wow. Okay. I'm buying that telling of this song really well. Wow. All right, you're up, my friend. This was not your calling. Just look how far you've fallen. Ooh, I don't like that. I heard your story, man. You've got to be joking. Keep things in perspective. This is my true objective. Why tear this heart out if it's only been broken? Court stuff, right? Like, I heard how you tried to defend your behavior in court. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Why? you're lying. Why are you making it worse? Yeah. You broke my heart. Now you're trying to tear it out. Rough. Yeah, that is. I really want to believe this was about the manager who stole from him. I, I, I don't even know if it's a question anymore. I think you nailed it, man. That's so, yeah. Cool. What and then it, I should have done research. I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't be scrolling while you're talking. That's. <laughs> Pretty damn cool. No, no, we don't do research. That's not our show. <laughs> but Lord, that that hits hard, which is nice. It's again, the lyrics are vomit lyrics, and maybe that's what Billy Joel, the human being, needed. Wow. Okay. We could have gone all the way to the great. Uh, do you want to write the rest, or do I get all the Great Wall of China stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do I'll do some Great Wall of China. Why not? We could have gone all the way to the Great Wall of China. If only you'd had a little more faith in me. In lieu of diamonds, gold, and platinum, reminders will still shine bright. All the king's men and all the king's horses can't put you together the way you used to be. We could have been standing on the Great Wall of China. Oh, I just, here's what hit me just now. Okay, in lieu of diamonds, gold and platinum reminders will still shine bright. So uh, let's assume that it's his crooked manager. In lieu of diamonds, in yep. lieu of all the money you could have still been making had you had my back, had you not been a criminal, had you not cheated me. Yep. Now the only thing that's left is look what I've still been doing. I'm still doing this stuff. I'm still making money. I'm still making albums. I'm still great. And you I, could have been yeah. part of that. Gold. Be on the Great Wall of China. Yep. Gold, 
Man, gold and platinum reminders will still shine bright, which is so the gold and platinum reminders are him saying, look at this idiot. <laughs> yeah. I'm still pretty awesome and you're nothing. Yeah. But in lieu of uh, diamonds, that you, which is you stole that from me. <laughs> yeah. Money you stole. I still got the gold and the platinum. Yep. And more to come. You More, more to, come. to come, which is the point. It was like, Although maybe, not more to come because of uh, the last studio album. True. Well, true. Yeah. <laughs> you know that at the time. I'd probably still be making money from booking gigs. Um, I'm, I took the liberty of uh, going to another website where they s claim uh, unequivocally that the song is about his former manager and ex-brother-in-law. Oh, yeah. Bezzled millions of dollars, so we got it right. Yeah, and so then actually there was a lot more because that happened a number of albums before this, right? <laughs> what like didn't didn't the breakup with the crooked brother-in-law manager happen a well few before albums? this so yeah. he he did miss out on some more platinum and some, yeah you know, and gold. this he may have known this was his last album and was like let me settle some scores yeah yep it also says here that the original the working title of this song was frankie my dear i don't give a damn Frankie was the name of his manager. Oh, I wish he would have kept that title. Though we do have to say we were wrong. There was some editing. <laughs> yeah. And it was for the best. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well, you know what? I like the song a lot better. For sure. Yeah. It's just, and then that funny. I mean, that happens to us a lot. We're like, I'm pretty sure the song is no, actually, I, there's something I like. <laughs> It's that's true. why we like Billy Joel, because we're one of the things about you and me, and this I think is true of you, and you tell me if I'm wrong, is you and me, nice enough guys, but we're not above holding a grudge. <laughs> yes. Um, he um, is very good at persuading us to like the song if we take the time. Yeah but not very good at winning us over with the initial song. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, well, listen, that's what's going to happen if you manage to get to 69 episodes of a show where you're analyzing Billy Joel lyrics. Wearing us down. Wow. Oh, man. Funny, funny, because the lyrics are big and fat, but lord there was something on his mind that needed to be said and i'm really glad he said it in his last album i think you're right i think he was just like listen this needs to be said and it claims it's very funny because it's so vitriolic and there's just the one line where it's like oh, you only get me uh you only beat me if you get me to hate yeah now here's uh three pages of me hating you <laughs> yeah so i guess he gotcha <laughs> but yeah <laughs> I got you, but you kind of win. Yeah, Lord, it's that's it. Framing it, it, I see. I like the way we do it without research because it's funner to try to discover the meaning. We're doing a, a little escape room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, we don't know what we're doing. Oh, wait, we do. We are smart. Oh well, oh, yeah. Thank you. And the one thing that I think we both do in this under-researched way is we're reading the lyrics for the first time on the show. Yeah. So you're like, this is about a lady. Oh, no, there's no way this is about a lady. <laughs> and we both heard these songs more than once. Yeah. It proves that uh, people listen to music. They don't listen to words. A friend of mine recently heard American Pie. Have never heard, have never really heard American Pie. Oh my God! Grew up How in Port grew up in Puerto Rico. Uh huh. And he was like, "I mean, none of those lyrics mean anything." <laughs> and I'm like, "It's so funny you would say that because it's literally the song oh. people point to as every lyric means something." <laughs> ah, it's a great song to say that about. Yeah, it's <laughs> just random nonsense. Yeah, I mean, what? 
you know, the sergeants played a marching tune. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Who ever heard of a devil? A jester? There's no jesters anymore. <laughs> and then I we had a long walk and ex I explained some of it to him. And then I realized I really do talk a lot. <laughs> that guy's in your head, man. Yeah, he really is. It's nice when somebody else is in there, though. I'm in there too much. So, yeah. Anybody else who wants that wants the room, just know <laughs> it's it's messy. It is a fucking mess in there. You're just hosting. Yeah, hosting a little oh. open mic in your head. <laughs> well, look. <laughs> well, look at that. Well, look at that. Yes, that's a very spare movie poster. Uh, it's not a movie oh. poster. It's a close up. It's a. I'm sorry. It's not a movie poster. It's a close up. Oh, it's a close up of a uh, a leaflet or a flyer. Even a tighter a close up. Huh? There's a premiere going on. That's right. It's so it's an even closer close up. Ah, so it could be a ticket. Yep. It's probably yeah. not the whole ticket though. It's not two tickets to paradise because that's somebody else's song. Yeah. It's not the whole ticket though. No. Oh. Just the ticket stub. Yes, it is. From the very famous song, Ticket Stub. <laughs> ticket well, stub. listen, I'll give you a hint. One, one of the hints is I'm a dick. Because this song is so, so, yeah. I'll say this song is tiny. Oh, ah, okay. So as a ticket stub, uh, that would be a good example of a souvenir. That's right. Yeah, you are a dick. <laughs> yeah, it's barely a song. Uh, it's. I think I mentioned this in an early episode where I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll talk about this," and then I looked at it and was like, "No, I'm not going to pick this song." It's like, it's like, it's, I will. I I'll do a quick synopsis of the song. It's super pretty. Yeah. It's and I think it's a homage to the Beatles. Okay. Because I think he's doing a thing the Beatles did on a number of albums, which is he decided that this is his version of a tiny song that barely goes anywhere yeah and it's super pretty and it's super pretty like her majesty and end in the end and all those songs that are so tiny that george martin went well why don't we put them all on one album and string them together like a opera um i saw a very funny tweet from somebody and i cannot find it again but the gist of it was the Beatles are crazy because there will be a song that is the most beautiful and eloquent reverie on the subject of love that you've ever heard. And then the next song will be like, bing, bong, bing, Mr. Silly Pants went for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh. Because it's very true. Yes, it's 100% true. And it's God, I got. I think if they only did the pretty songs, there wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't, wouldn't be the Beatles. It wouldn't be the Beatles, and no. I think you'd still think the songs were great, but they're part they'd of the mat. You know what they would be? They'd be bread. <laughs> <laughs> they like, oh, gorgeous songs. Yeah. Or yeah, bad. That, that was their con job phase because there was all this like conning their fans with this thing has meaning and and when the fans would find meaning they'd laugh and go let's double down on the crazy meaning these hippies see yep because uh hippies yeah because the hippies were smoking pot and trying to learn things the beatles were just like yeah we just kind of like smoking pot <laughs> right we've already learned too much yeah, well, they went to the Maharishi and, and realized, oh, everyone's full of shit. Cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, then bang, bang, Maxwell, silver hammer it is. <laughs> the song, <laughs> bit of trivia about that, of course, is John Lennon. He did that song. Yeah, that seems right. <laughs> yeah, he hated that. He hated Ovaladi. He hated all that stuff. Like I don't. You, a passing fan could figure out which songs he hated. Yeah, he wasn't right or wrong. That's just true. That's just what he disliked. Yeah. 
I like how grumpy he was. Yeah. Just all the success. I re- oh, you know the song, Oh Darling" by the Beatles? Great yeah. rock and roll song. John, in some interview I saw, was like, and the truth is, I should have sang that. Paul should have had me sing that. That's more my kind of a song. But he wrote it and he wanted to sing it. I was like, you're still kind of mad that you didn't get to sing it. <laughs> and yes, Paul wrote it, so he gets to decide. Yeah. Whoever is driving gets to choose the radio station. Also, I would agree with you if Paul wasn't such a killer on that song. His vocals were fucking... voice is amazing. He yeah. shreds on that song. Yeah, I'm sure John would have been great too, but he fucking shreds. What? Uh, yeah. My wife does a cover of that song live sometimes. She shreds, I'll bet. Dude. Because my wife has a lifetime build of uh, hurt that comes out in music. Yeah. Oh, credit to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My wife's life is terrible. <laughs> um, she, I, you know, good joke, actually. I'm not the reason, but still, that's very. Funny. I know. I, yeah. But that guy doesn't know. Funny or my way. The guy on the left is the truth. The guy on the left is handsome and sexy. The guy on the right hurts his wife. <laughs> They're going to come for you, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, uh, here's my dumb trivia. We've been doing this for a long time, so trivia is getting hard to come by. Nice. <laughs> is it nice? I just find it. Well, you have the same struggle I do with the picture. It's very funny that we're painting ourselves into these corners. Yeah. Hey, what's Billy Joel's uh, astrological sign? Oh, um, uh, he's a Cancer. Yes, but no, his astrological <laughs> his first four wives would agree with you. Oh. Do you know his birthday? No. And would that help you if you did? Only if he was born in January. <laughs> right. I have the same problem. Oh, I'm going to say he's a Pisces. No. Okay. It'll make he, sense. He's a Capricorn? Nine more guesses. Okay. He's a monkey. That's the Chinese. No, that's the Chinese one. That's the um, place you're thinking of the placemats. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a Taurus. He's a Taurus. Okay. Because of course he is. Yeah. He's very he, stubborn and bullheaded. Do you know yeah. why I guessed the uh, Capricorn or Cancer? Is there tropics? Because for some reason, a shit ton of like singers are. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, interesting. And also that might not be true, but I think it's true. Um, Did you know that almost every professional NHL player was born in uh, January or February? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you think that's... (laughs) Because astrology is ridiculous. I've oversimplified that. The ones from Canada. Okay. Do yeah. you think that that's just because when your parents boned and they had a baby and the baby was born in a month? I don't know. I'm trying to think, would there be some logistical thing that made it more likely you were going to be a hockey player? It has to do with the junior hockey system in Canada, where if you were born in those two months, somehow you got put in with the older kids and you were forced to play at a higher level earlier. And oh. those players all got better than everybody else, their own age. That makes so much sense. And I bet just a shit ton of them are the enforcers. Yeah. Because that means that some of the ones who weren't necessarily as gifted, but put in the work, went. Because my buddy uh, Walker, I've talked about him before, very nearly made it to the show. Uh, except for an injury. He's a very good hockey player. He played minor league, got paid to play it, was an absolutely a professional athlete in the truest sense. And I always admire that about him. And then he had an injury and that happens. But he would tell you that he was mostly, an, you know, his part of his job was, oh, they hit our guy. So go hit their guy. Right. And uh, And he would also say he was lucky he came up when he did because people are more talented now. But I think that's universally true of almost every sport. Hold on one second. Do you want food? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to order from Belly. 
All right, nice. The band, right? You're gonna order from Belly. In order from Belly, get some. Uh, I'm gonna get some fuzzy guitar <laughs> and uh, some weird lyrics. Well, listen, you need to eat. So, what are we doing on episode seventy? I think we should uh, visit the duet with Cindy Lauper. Getting closer. Okay, I would love to do that. I love Cindy Lauper. She's the best. She keeps. You know what? This idea actually came to me from a commercial because she does those commercials for uh, uh, psoriasis. Not that she doesn't advertise psoriasis. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a drug you can take to help you with your psoriasis. And she's on those commercials all the time. Ah, sweet. Dope, dope, dope. Making a little money, a little coin. Also, oh. she is now a um, Tony Award winner. How great oh, is that? Oh. Um, I don't remember the production she helped write, but I remember seeing her and being so delighted. Andrea Martin as well from right. SCTV Fan has won a yeah. Tony. Whenever I see those folks, I'm always happy because I love Cindy Lauper. You know, I will say that in her older years, she's not nearly as unusual as she used to be. Right. But I she's mean, lovely. Because she was a trendsetter, and then everybody followed the trends. Yep. And they were like, oh, now now you don't stand out nearly as much. It's a problem with being a trendsetter, but I don't have to tell you. That's right. That's why I get the blowback I get. Um, <laughs> right. I, she should put out an album called um, She's So Usual. That would be really fun if she did it. And she covers standards. Oh, fuck. She covers standards. And the title of the and she it would be beautiful. She has a wonderful voice. Wonderful voice. She still lot, got it. A lot of Cole Porter. Oh my God! And it's called "She's So Usual." Oh. Nothing but good ideas from this podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I gotta remember to send a notes to Cindy Lauper. Oh, this will never. Yeah. Nothing will ever happen. All right. Well, listen, I, I'm glad you enjoy half our show. There you go.